All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to uh, Mavericks Head to Head Nine uh, reviews. Uh, so uh, we are we are starting off here with uh, the first match of round two of Head to Head Nine. Uh, and again, real quick, I know I've said this before, but if uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, uh, Head to Head Nine is a contest held on New Element. Uh, dot com, new element uh, any designs dot com uh, where we take six teams pit them head to head in a round robin uh, style format uh, and two parks face off at and the community votes on who's the best um, throughout a seven week season um, and then into playoffs and ultimately decide a champion so here we are starting off round two this is match one of round two uh, where we have the uh, adventurers club going up against the manual laborers um, so this first park here uh, is from the manual laborers. This is Pirates, uh, and this was created by Nin, NK, MK98, and Jens J. Um, and as you can tell from uh, the overview here, um, Pirates is uh, basically uh, themed around pirates. Um, we've got uh, basically, we're starting off here with just the um, one of the best uh, just individual scenes I think we've seen. In Roller Coaster Tycoon, um, with these gorgeous pirate ships being attacked by the Kraken, uh, with the Whirlpool uh, down below. Now, there's no direct link. I don't think they've mentioned anywhere between uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies and uh, this park, um, but it is certainly uh, heavily implied here with uh, this famous scene from, I believe, the second movie. Um, and we've also got, you know, the names uh, Queen Anne's Revenge, but it's clearly something based off the Black Pearl, something based off on the other ships, but. Uh, uh, so let's yeah let, I mean keep jumping right in um like I said this this opening scene is just absolutely incredible um, with the tentacles here um, coming up out of the water um, with the the car trains on them giving them a bit of movement rather than just being static um, they look fantastic um, the boats themselves uh, we've seen a lot of great boats in RCT and these are definitely up there um, you know I definitely say some of the best uh, pirate uh, ship style boats that we've seen. Um, in the game, and I just love the fact that you kind of there's some active uh, battle going on. We've got the explosions in front of the, the cannons, obviously firing off this ship, uh, just you know being knocked in half. Presumably, some by the cannonballs and some by the kraken itself. Um, and then we've got uh, all the different uh, crewmates on the uh, on the ship. I believe these are all, yeah all the names of uh, their takes on names of uh, of the uh, adventurers club here on this side. Um, Kind of taking a shot at the fact that then these guys here are uh, the manual laborers on the on the Black Pearl, uh, firing off hopefully to a win um, here. But this just I mean this is just there's so much movement involved. You can keep staring at it. There's things to discover. There's boats coming in and out around. Um, we've got some uh, some animals over here. Uh, you know somebody getting attacked by by an animal there. Um, just so much uh, going on. Oh, you can, you had just noticed there's some cannonballs getting flung across as well beyond just the uh, explosions. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, just a lot. It's just so well placed with the and framed with with the scene behind it. Um, it really kind of uh, lives on its own, so to so to speak. In that it's just it's it's very picturesque. Um, I mean, definitely looks best from this angle you view it when you open the map. Um, but certainly, there's not a bad angle. Maybe this one because there's the mountain in the way. Um, well, this is just an absolutely, absolutely gorgeous scene um, to open up with the park. But that's not all, there, not all there is to this map. There's plenty more to discover. Um, and, and first of all being the thing that you probably notice next is just the crazy landscaping that this map has. Um, a lot of varied use of different types of rock textures from we got the 1K ruins. Um, there's some neat uh, kind of hexagonal uh, rock pillars that I believe in the manual is made. Um, and then the kind of, I think they're the base game volcano kind of used uh, and cut out from probably the tile inspector in Open RCT um, to make some of these walls up here. And then all the plants and the vines, we've got the, the gallows as a nod. I can't remember which Pirates uh, movie that's from. It might be the first one. Um, but just, yeah, this, this seems, it's the landscaping itself is just, um, just gorgeous. Um, and the way everything interacts with it is uh, very, very well done as well. Um, and speaking of things that interact with the landscape, well, we've got our uh, Soul Roller Coaster uh, on the map. Um, this is Gangplank, uh, just a mine train style ride um, with, interestingly enough, only one banked curve, as I can see this one here after this, uh, 
S bend of a drop um, as we're catching the train here. That just that little run was uh, right out of the station uh, back here, which is really cool, really well done with the arches made out of wood coaster track. Um, the pirate ship kind of almost looks like they commandeered uh, a ship that looks like a ship maybe flipped upside down because we got the master. They just stole parts from a ship um, and used it to build the the station there. Um, so we're catching the ride coming off the lift. Really cool S-Bend drop wrapping around the landscape here. Again, no bank turn there except there's the one on the ride uh, as it gets to its fastest point. But then the rest of the ride spent shooting. I guess there's another one right there. Um, but the rest of the ride is spent shooting up, down, around, through the landscape. Um, there's some cool underground detail uh, scenes, which we'll get to in a second, but nice diagonal drop there. Some uh, great support work. This ride does have some really, uh, really good, really clever supports um, throughout, kind of just being, you know, anchored into the side of the side of the cliffs here. Um, as we can see, yeah, we got to the final uh, wraparound again. Looks like a ship's mast being used to support it in this kind of underground cavern as it helixes up uh, and into the brakes. But it's a, it's a really cool design. It's not necessarily realistic in terms of, you know, uh, what we see from a modern day ride or even something from, you know, the history of, mo of, of roller coasters, at least in, the, in a modern sense, you know, the last... Uh, 50 to 50 to 70 years or so, but it doesn't feel out of place for the context of where it's in. It feels real in the sense of where it fits in. You know, this whole map is definitely more of a fantasy setting, but the things in it fit within the setting that they're going for. And I think that's really the big thing. If you're going to do fantasy, um, you know, you kind of establish a uh, a basically laws of physics or laws of whatever it is, magic, whatever you're using in your fantasy world, um, and just have everything be consistent with that. And this feels very consistent with everything in here, um, more or less being, like all the buildings on this on this side of the map being uh, thrown together, seemingly out of just whatever they could find, whatever washed ashore, um, and it all fits together really nicely. Integrated well with the, again, beautiful landscape, um, and it's just it's just absolutely gorgeous, very well done. Um, so props to props to the uh, manual laborers here for for this uh, great coaster design on something that's not uh, not very traditional, um, especially um, as on other quick details we got over here. Uh, we've got this cool uh, cable car uh, zip line transport going from the base, you know, docks up to this uh, cool cool watchtower again, presumably made out of old ships. Um, really cool little uh, transfer mechanism, and again, feels like something they would have made given the the scenario of this world that we're in um so i love that and then another one here with the with the elevator uh over in the corner here into these great great buildings um again just feels feels really cool and we got obviously the bones from i'm gonna guess a big whale <laughs> uh over here just but yeah super well done super consistent um Love it a lot. And then as we keep uh, moving over, we got another nice uh, supporting right here, a little swinging ship, which uh, I feel for a park themed to pirates and ships, uh, almost have to have one of these. Um, uh, it's a nice shoestrung ride. It's a little odd that it's got that flat spot in the middle um, that it actually travels over when the base underneath it's not. I feel like that could have been avoided. Um, but nevertheless, it's a great, it's, you know, good hack, pr relatively easy to do. Um, and uh, yeah, fits well. Nice again, more fun uh, details made out of presumably old ships and wood um, on that side here. So as we then wrap around to our final uh, little corner of the park, we've got this uh, nice little cove where we kind of break away from the rest of what this map has been um, to something quite different. This almost looks uh, like a very El Dorado-y style uh, area, kind of this lost, uh, maybe not necessarily lost civilization, but this secret secret civilization here in this cove that uh, maybe the Kraken's what's protecting. But clearly a ship has made it in, um, which again, another gorgeous, gorgeous uh, ship in here, again, with more uh, uh, names of uh, team members uh, or takes on names of team members uh, in the cove as it, as it comes in. But uh, it's just, you know, another gorgeous ship. And that's really, I think, what shines the most about this map outside of the uh, opening scene itself. Um, but this this structure, it's pretty neat. Um, it feels, I wouldn't necessarily say it feels completely out of place because it does seem to fit in with what they're going for. I just maybe wish that there could have been a bit more context to it. Um, it's definitely hidden off. It definitely does well that it's hidden off in the corner. Um, I think that plays well to the fact that it, it definitely feels like it's supposed to be hidden um, in the map. It's just 
it's hard to place down what exactly feels maybe not right about it because it's done very well. The architecture is great. Um, colors are colors are good. Colors are fine. It's just I don't know. I think the rest of it just is a bit different enough from the rest of the map to make it feel a little bit weird. But it's uh, one of those things that's kind of it's hard to knock against it. Um, uh, it's just kind of one of those things though that happens with head-to-head -head parks when you know you got a deadline. Maybe it's, they had a deadline. They they wanted to do more and they couldn't. Um, or just the space constraints, um, or whatever it is. Um, but when you have a when you have a time and space limit, um, sometimes things can feel off, and you can't really pin down why. Um, but within this uh, uh, building architecture back here, we've got our second main second main attraction. Um, I'd almost even call it the main attraction of uh, of the park, and this is the Voyage of Guiana Capic. Um, Hopefully, again, we're, we're having fun with uh, doing things that I can't necessarily pronounce correctly. Hopefully, I am. Um, but this is a great, great boat ride that goes around. I won't follow the whole thing because we're running out of time here. But uh, it, it follows all the way around, goes through the whirlpool here. I'll highlight some bits uh, through the whirlpool. Um, and then the last really cool scene there is this ghost ship in the back that it will pop out at. Um, but the following the boat ride, I'll leave that up to you, uh, the viewer. Um, but it does tell a story, a really neat story. Um, as you're viewing the map. So uh, in the interest of time, we will move on. But this was Pirates, uh, again, made by Nin, MK98, and Jens J from the Manual Laborers. And they went up against uh, the park El Dorado by the Adventurers Club. And this was made by Scoop, Barn, Barnid, uh, Central Ethiopian Police, and Lewis. Um, and this is uh, an absolutely gorgeous park. Funnily enough, uh, that back bit in Pirates, um, this feels like a more flushed out version of that back bits in the Pirates Park, whereas the El Dorado, again, you can kind of just tell very similar colors. Uh, the base blue, the accents of the golds, obviously there's some other colors in here as well, but it's uh, funnily enough that we've got uh, a couple matches, uh, or a couple parks in this head-to-head -head already that are very similar uh, in concept. Um, but this uh, is just an absolutely, absolutely gorgeous park um, centered around this big Aztec style temple. Um, we've got the uh, hotel off to the side here um, as well. These are two big main uh, structures on the map. And this is themed basically to be um, if the real El Dorado or real El Dorado had uh, a theme park sprung up about it. So everything, obviously, in you know, a city of gold, everything's made of gold or has gold accents to it. Um, and it's just super well done. We'll explore some of those details as we get in. But uh, great entrance plaza here with the fountain. Love the. Uh, uh, Aztec kind of god style statue in the middle there done super well um, with that weird uh, Aztec god looking object. Um, great stalls off to the side here. Um, one thing I would love to point out too is that with the custom palettes as we've seen um, throughout the game, uh, one thing that can be tricky to do with that is the watercolor and I think um, usually I'm not a big fan of changing the base game watercolor, but here in this specific context I think it works really well um, having this kind of more I'd almost call it anime anime water. Um, a bit more, bit more blue, bit more kind of bright uh, water. Um, but I think it works really well to highlight that this is kind of more fantastical. Um, the reason I'm kind of against it is you can see the waterfall here is a bit different color in spots, um, and just kind of one of those things that happens when you change the color of the palette. But uh, as on the whole, um, I do think it works really well here, especially since it's not dominating uh, the map. But uh, on this side, we've got, again, great waterfall, great architecture in, in, the, in the side of the cliffs here. Um, super, super fantastic stuff through the little village outside of, uh, outside of the park. Um, so we'll dive into the park itself as you can come through the temple. You've got a couple different routes you can go. We'll follow this one uh, over here to the side. Again, more buildings in the cliffs kind of off the back side of that. Um, we get to our first ride, which is uh, it's the top spin. They just, I don't, does it have a name? It should have a name. Uh, no, it just says top spin shoestring. So unfortunately, it doesn't actually have a name. Um, but when you talked about uh, the, one of the parks uh, in Grontel Grimm in round uh, one of not having working top spin, this is what you can do with the top spin. Um, Rumi made some really cool uh, counter rotating cars. So instead of uh, following the track, they just do the mirror rotation of what the at track actually does. Um, to get you this basically this really cool uh, top spin top spin effect um, that you can shoestring, and this is uh, obviously based off uh, Talacan, I believe is the name of it, at uh, Fantasia Land, uh, with it set back into the 
scene like this, but it's a super, super cool ride, super, super well done, um, super well themed. Kind of a shame that there's really only one good angle to view it at, um, but it's a really nicely done ride nevertheless. Um, so as we keep moving around, we'll, uh, we got two rides here that are kind of intertwined. We'll take a look uh, first at this, the drop tower, uh, Furia de Halicon, um, which is uh, based off of Falcon's Fury at Busch Gardens Tampa with the uh, car drop cars that uh, tilt you and face you towards the ground, which is a super, super cool heck um, with the catch cars to take you up top. Kind of a shame, as uh, you'll see, they don't separate. Um, they all drop together, which isn't real, but it's uh, still a super cool uh, hack nevertheless. Um, and around that, as we're catching it here on the hold break, is Quasicodal, um, the dive machine here. Um, Lewis's contribution to the park, I know, was the layouts. Um, and this is a fantastic dive machine layout, um, kind of taking off the modern, uh, the smaller ones, the six seaters. Um, but obviously, we're here, we're using the, uh, the eight car cross trains because they have the sprites for the barrel rolls. Um, but nice, simple layout for a dive coaster. You know, you got your, your drop. I love the drop out of the, uh, I guess the lion statue's mouth here, uh, super well detailed, super cool visually from an off-ride perspective, um, which is a big thing of dive coasters in real life is to have that uh, really cool off-ride visual. Um, into the signature implement as it wraps around the drop tower, uh, up into a zero G roll, down into a water splash, which almost all dive coasters have nowadays. Um, wrap around through the main uh, temple building uh, and then into the brakes. Um, so pretty simple layout, but I think it's done, uh, I think it's done really well, it really fits as well integrated in the area and that's kind of what you want uh, mostly out of a dive coaster. Um, so moving on here, we've got two more main rides in the park. Um, the first one here is a Temple, Templo de okay, uh, Kutala, I think, hopefully. Um, but nice little mine train, cool, uh, if a bit glitchy uh, elevator lift there with the track coming up with it. Um, super cool uh, to see that done. It's not done very often, at least not visually. Um, so really cool that they've got that timed up well. But just a nice, simple uh, mine train going up. We've got the River of Gold uh, coming through it. Uh, that's super, super, super cool, super well done. Um, so moving on then, our next uh, and second, uh, or I guess third, uh, main coaster. Um, this is uh, Yagura. Uh, and this is a intimate Aquatrax, which is always a pleasant thing to see in the game. We don't see uh, too, too many of them, especially not in real life. There's only one. Um, but this is a very well done Aquatrax, taking the, taking the, you know, uh, the main points and beats from the one in real life uh, and applying them here in its own unique layout um, with the little turn over the water, dropping out. I love the drop out of the temple here. It's framed really well. Um, Again, super cool visually. You got the nice turn over the water. Um, the great, this small temple to accent the big one in the middle, and then this one over here. So it's nice that they kind of got that three points um, going with it. And then a super cool overgrown uh, station building that almost looks like an old castle of some sort. Um, but super, super cool. Uh, and then what I would argue is the highlight ride of the park is this gorgeous, gorgeous log flume. This is uh, Rio Maldito. Um, and it's just absolutely fantastically done, super, super well integrated into uh, the landscape and the building. Um, and I think the highlight of this is definitely this uh, diagonal uh, drop rise and dip into the splash uh, as the finale of the ride. Um, diagonals on log flumes are tricky um, because usually they don't have the sprites, but thankfully uh, Kinos uh, had made uh, these uh, log flumes that have uh, the steep drop sprites and uh, look super, super cool. Uh, and they're actually able to do the diagonals as well, despite the, uh, the splash at the end here. Um, so, and I've got a dog in here now, so that's exciting. <laughs> um, but uh, super, super well done ride. Um, looks really cool. Again, the architecture is just fantastic. Um, and it all fits really well. Um, so that's kind of the main points I uh, wanted to get on here, but we're running a long, bit long on time here. So I'll, I'll cut it off and leave that to, uh, the viewer to explore um, both parks. Uh, the links will be in the description uh, to go and download them and check them out yourself. There's a lot more uh, to discover than what I can do in one of these reviews. But uh, ultimately, uh, this match went to the Adventurers Club by a score of 51 to 30. So congrats to them. Uh, with the El Dorado again, there's a Scoop, Barnid, uh, Central Ethiopian Police, and Lewis um, with a fantastic, fantastic park. Again, both of these parks were great, as we'll see uh, throughout this head-to-head. -head, um, 
there's a lot of really good matches, really high, really high quality stuff that comes out. Uh, and again, it's just unfortunate that one of them has to lose. But uh, thank you guys very much for watching uh, and stick around. We'll have the next review up here very soon um, and hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.